Hello everybody, it's Dr. D. Hope you are well. And today I get to see, sit with Denise Keating, who is the campus library manager at our Harper campus. She's also a former president of College Senate. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm, I'm nice to see you. And so what does the EDI work at the college mean to you? And what would you like to see it? How, how do you wanna see us move through that? Well, when I think about EDI at the college, it's really about what we do and who we are, and it's at the core of everything. Um, you know, I've kind of fallen into this organically um, through my work at the college, and um, it's a process. And um, I think that um, we all have a role to play in it, mm -hmm. and it should really be intrinsically something that we do in our everyday practice, whether it be at work or at home. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some great opportunity. I am. I am so grateful for the opportunity to be on the council um, and I'm looking forward to the work ahead and engaging in conversations um, with students and fellow employees about this topic and I'm really interested to hear their voices um, because um, it's not so, it, the council has a role um, but it's really us as employees and students that are going to make this live. Right, it's a culture. Mm -hmm and it's a way of life and it's about behavior, right? So it's awareness, behavior, and then the change. And we've talked about that at our first meeting of the council mm -hmm. and there'll be more to come on that. So what do you think um, it ha is going well in terms of the EDI work and the framework that I think we're gonna try to build, but what do you think is going well at the college and specifically in the work that you're doing? And I know you've kind of been involved in various ways. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what you think is going well, especially from your vantage point. Um, well, I think what's going well right now is, is kind of like the merging of the work that we've talked about. We've had a lot of great grassroots um, efforts at the college from lots of different employees on, on, on topics that touch on EDI. Um, and so I, what I see that's really kind of coming together is that we have a combination of the grassroots efforts um, in combination with you and the administration of the college and outside expertise. We don't all have the answer, um, but having um, Rhea as the executive on loan as a chief diversity officer and bringing these resources to bear about the work, mm -hmm. um, I think will move us forward uh, quicker and faster. Mm -hmm. um, as far as my role and some of the things that I've done, I've kind of fallen into it. It's, it's just something that, you know, I'm kind of a questioner and I ask questions. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I asked questions, um, you know, when I first got here, uh, probably about my, our non-discrimination um, policy and uh, the inclusion of perhaps sexual orientation or how the LGBTQ community can know that um, they can bring their full selves to work. Um, and so, you know, these are just questions that we ask and through my work in College Senate and um, being able to um, be a part of that, um, I'm, I'm grateful for those opportunities. So Rhea is exceptional. Um, so grateful to Bank of America that they brought her to us um, as an executive on loan. Thank you for mentioning that. I think she has not only hit the ground running, but just brought a tremendous amount of resource in herself um, and others uh, to the college. So as we think about that um, and some of the policy changes or maybe even the things that we need to, to deal with vulnerably as an institution, mm -hmm. what would you like to see us enhance as we start the work or around the things that maybe are already being amplified? Well, I think to start with is defining what equity, diversity, and inclusion means. It means lots of different things to lots of different people, and I think we need to be clear about what that means. Um, I think being clear in our policies, if that's mm -hmm. who we are and what we do, then those policies need to be written and communicated um, uh, in who we recruit to the college mm -hmm. as well as how um, we onboard our employees, and also it's a message uh, to recruit students um, to our institution and be part of um, the great educational opportunities that we provide. So being clear up front internally and externally about what that means for us as a college, um, I think is a first step. Um, I think also, as I've talked about before, is um, as we went through our strategic planning process, we included voices um, to be part of that process. I think that's extremely important as far as the equity and diversity and inclusion work here at the college. Mm -hmm. um, I like to see more of those conversations. Over the summer, um, Service Learning did some great conversations um, about systemic racism in the country and, uh, and sharing of experiences. I think those, more of those conversations need to happen on a variety of topics as we deal with a holistic approach to EDI at the college. 
Well, I know you've been really embedded in the work. So is there one thing that you've been working on that now that you have a chance to tell everybody about, you'd like to tell folks about? Well, you know, I think that this work on the council is, is something that um, I'm looking forward to um, talking more about mm -hmm. um, with um, clear deliverables and outcomes. Sure. Um, you know, as far as some of the past work, you know, um, I will say that my work on the safe zone, um, I'm very proud of and the team that we've worked with to um, bring forth understanding and um, uh, about LGBTQ students and how we can best support them. Um, and I think that's been um, something that I'm proud of. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working on College Senate right now as the Professional Staff Welfare Committee um, Chair and working with a great team there. And um, I think that there's some work there in the one college model uh, around um, engaging with classified counsel. I'm very excited about that, but having some um, conversations with them as we talk about equity as far as employees yeah. and really excited about that work um, and also working with the Student Welfare Committee and, you know, maybe kind of investigating how we can help transportation mm -hmm. um, at the college for students. So um, still in the early phases of those things, but I'm excited about the work. Well, that is a lot of work. So I want to go back a couple of things that you mentioned, I think take great vulnerability um, as we have these conversations and we really kind of dig in. And you've been pretty vulnerable uh, in some conversations about the work that you do and, and your perspective. And so what, as you sit here today, and hopefully we have lots of faculty and staff joining us to watch, what are the, what's the one thing as we, you know, it's a journey as we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Lots of folks are involved. You've done some things. Maybe everybody doesn't know exactly what safe zone means. We can't, we can't make assumptions about that, right? right. Um, and so what would you want people to do? What's the next step for everybody at the college to get um, to understand, to get excited, and to get involved in the work? And do you think there's a place for everybody? Oh, definitely. There's a place for everyone. Um, I guess I'm going to have to go um, to talk a, bit, a little bit about courage. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of my favorite values. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's something that I think, you know, this year has, has caused me to be very reflective mm -hmm. um, about my life experiences and where I am and where I want to focus my energies on. And so I guess I would challenge everyone to um, be reflective of their experience here at the college. Um, understand that maybe their experiences m might be framed by past experience that may not be where we are now and may not be where we're going in the future. So um, I'm asking them to have a little courage to have those hard conversations, to, the courage to be uncomfortable, um, the courage to advocate for yourself and the courage to advocate for others and to speak up. You know, there's always that thing, should I say something? Yeah. Um, and that's gonna be tough. I've struggled with that as well. You know, when should I say something? When should I say I should I should just be quiet? But I think that there's an opportunity for us to have some really intentional conversations and sometimes hard conversations. Um, and I challenge everyone to have some courage and some compassion. Um, I think that that is the key, those two together, mm -hmm. um, to be able to um, put yourself in others' shoes. Um, and have that compassion um, around the work that we do and the experiences that our fellow employees and students have. Right, for sure. So that courage and the compassion, I think each it equals the cultural change that we mm -hmm. all want for our institution. Mm -hmm. I think we all want to belong. We all want to see the institution uh, be transformed and be even more excellent than it is. But it does take all those things that you talked about and we all have experiences that have shaped us, right? And it brings us, when we come into this work, um, that vulnerability, that courage, the compassion to actually engage, uh, we come at it from very different places. And so would you be willing to share uh, something in your life, personally or professionally, whichever you choose, um, an experience that has kind of shaped you? I could share a personal story, but I think I, most recently, I would guess, I would, I would kind of lend itself to a professional experience. Please. Um, you know, I think um, my role uh, as College Senate President was something that shaped me. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, um, a, a growth opportunity for me. Um, and I was truly humbled um, by the support of faculty and staff in that role. Because as you know, it, I was, I was a, a professional staff person in that role. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked with a lot of great people um, that really care about what we do here. 
um, in our role as educators. And when I talk about our role as educators, I think we all play a role in that. Um, staff and faculty, and we all have a role in what education means for our students and really for the community. Mm. So when I, you know we're a community college, and so when I come here and I do this work, it's really about impacting my community. For sure. When we bring people up, we, we we lift all boats, right? We do. You know, uh, if I give if if I allow someone to to rise i will rise as well mm -hmm. and it's not taking away anything from me mm. um, and so i think that um, you know we as a community college have a great opportunity about the partners and stakeholders in the charlotte area about how we can elevate our community as a whole and and central piedmont is at the center of that absolutely it's the core I always say we're the hub and there's lots of spokes and sometimes people forget we're the hub, but we certainly are. And um, I love the all in the attribute and the of the all boats, right? We forget, we always say all boats, but the emphasis needs to be on the all. Right. And uh, I think that's what we both really want, not only for our employees, but for our students. Mm -hmm. And I often say, if we can do it well and do it right here, and all those boats, all of our students who have the achievement gaps, who just seemingly can't make it through to the end, if we can, if we can increase that, those graduation rates, those completion rates, you know, five points, 10 points, I'd love to see it, you know, 100 points as we've talked about, um, that makes an impact on our community. And there will be no more conversation about economic and social mobility, right? It could, the impact the college can make on it is tremendous. Right, and in far, I'll say as far as the EDI work or the equity, diversity, inclusion work, when we allow um, our students and our employees to bring their full selves to work, mm -hmm. um, that just makes the, the, the results come quicker and, and, and the job easier, I think. Um, and so pr providing that space for everyone to bring their full selves to work and it, their energies are not, not put in a place where they have to feel like they're, they're hiding something, right? Or that they're, that, that they're gonna have a system based on what they need to be successful. Right. It's a sense of belonging mm -hmm. and service, for sure. Well, um, by the time that this airs, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's the right term, but I think, <laughs> by the time everybody <laughs> has an opportunity to view this video, how about that, um, we'll be well into the new year, mm -hmm. likely. And, um, you know, I pick a word of the year, and I'm not going to let you ask me about that today, although I know you want to, but I'll let you ask me. Go ahead. Um, you might catch me <laughs> off guard. But um, as you go into 2021, I, you know, I don't know if you do resolutions or a word of the year, but you've got to have something that's weighing on your heart and your mind as you go into a new year coming out of 2020. So what is that for you? Um, I'm going to use the words that I used before. So um, um, I don't think I can pick. I, I've, I, I'm kind of in your boat. I, I haven't really picked one word or the other. I think it's a theme per se. Mm. So I think it is around um, courage, compassion, and kindness. And like I said, I've reflected a lot about you know how I can move forward in 2021. And I just kind of want to bring those three things together mm -hmm. um, to be able to speak up, um, to be able to be compassionate, and, and also to be able to um, be kind. Yeah. Well, can I, if I were to, uh, you know, for the math faculty out there, who might, if I could just draw the line and put the denominator under that. And I think if we all come to that with a, a heart of listening, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe it's 2021 can be about not, um, let's not shout at each other. It's, uh, can we, it's not about who wins the argument. It's not about whose position or perspective is correct. I think we can't have the courage to enter into a conversation, show compassion if, and, and try to be kind. If, if we just seemingly say, you have, to, you have to, it has to be my vantage point, it has to be my viewpoint, mm -hmm. it has to be my way, because um, that doesn't move us along. And back to our work around equity, diversity, and inclusion, it certainly doesn't make me feel like I belong in that conversation, that I'm wanted, that my perspective, which I think is perspective is part of that work, mm -hmm. um, is desired, wanted, or appreciated. And so that denominator of just listening, um, I think is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when you get to come and visit with me, mm -hmm. you get to ask me one question, and I know you, that librarian, and you, <laughs> you have been studying up for this. I can just read <laughs> no. it on you. I'm almost afraid. No. Uh, but I'm going to let you ask me anything you want to ask me. Well, I think some of the questions that you asked me, um, so when I think about, you know, we're embarking on this EDI council work and it's something new um, mm -hmm. as a different kind of approach, I think, at the college and you as chairing that effort. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, what do you see as your role in moving EDI work forward and what would you say to our employees about what their role is? 
Yeah, it's a great question. First of all, I feel privileged that I'm going to serve. You know, I took, I didn't take that decision. I mean, I, I guess I get to choose who gets to chair, right? But I didn't choose to reconstitute the council and step in as chair without a lot of processing and pausing and, you know, my three P's that I kind of operate by. Um, it's it's the right thing to do for the right reasons, given the, the strategy around equity, the meaning of all that for us, and also um, our value. And so I feel privileged to be able to do it. I feel like the people who have now been um, asked to come and be on the council, I've had great feedback from them that they're excited that I'm gonna do it. And so I think for me, it's about making sure that we uh, take all the thoughts and ideas and perspectives about where we wanna go and make sure as a council, we listen to those as we just talked about um, and that we move in the directions that are equitable and responsible and that there's some accountability. I don't wanna just check the box or I don't wanna say, well, we're gonna do this, but let's assign that to a group who has an affin affinity around it. If it's really gonna be about creating awareness and changing behavior and building a culture of all the things that we just talked about, then there might need to be policy changes. We need obviously somebody at the institution who can kind of spread the word and spread the vision about that. And that's the role of the, of the person who sits in my chair. And, um, and we're gonna be serious. This is not just an initiative. And I just had that conversation with Dr. Davis. It'll be in one of the videos that we're shooting around this topic as well. And so I'm excited. What I would say is that there is a place at the table. It might not be at the council table, right? Um, but there's a place at the table to really think about what we wanna be as an institution for every employee and for every student. Mm -hmm. And we need to hear from those folks. So we're gonna go about that in very meaningful ways, whether we hold forums or through uh, the learning community or on the council but it has to be deep and wide, and um, there has to be behavioral change. And I think we've talked about that uh, among a number of topics at the institution, but unless there's an accountability and expectation around that, it's kind of like our conversations when you were previous college Senate president, <laughs> well, unless you mandate it and require it of them, Dr. D, remember those conversations? We're still having some of those. Um, I don't want to mandate that mm -hmm. somebody has to embrace equity, diversity, and inclusion. No, I agree. <laughs> because that's not the behavioral change or the culture that's gonna really get us where we want. What I wanna do is be able to lead that out and model it as I think great leaders do. Um, and I wanna surround myself with a group of council members and then again, the cabinet and others who really understand the why. And the why is still yet to be defined, as you know. There's lots of reasons institutionally um, and culturally, but there's a lot of work that we haven't done yet because we haven't had some of those vulnerable conversations. Mm -hmm. Because for in, in some regard, because we've been in a pandemic and we haven't been able to, right. I think, put people at tables and really work through, there's a lot of what I call heart work to do in this. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to look at ourselves first. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think you need to kind of be in the room together to do that. And I think the council has to do that as well. You know, you, at our first meeting, you heard me say, I think there's gonna be some vulnerable conversations. I think we're gonna share uh, probably in some laughs um, there's probably gonna be a few tears shed. Mm -hmm. And I very vulnerably and authentically said, I'm not gonna agree with everything that's said. Um, and you all are not gonna appreciate everything everybody else at the council, but I want everybody to be okay that it's being voiced and that we listen. Mm -hmm. And I hope that will shape us into a better institution. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited, um, but I also know that there's a lot of hard work ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And at the core of that, we need to change not only for ourselves, because it impacts our students, and we're delivering ourselves and, to, and our students into our community. Mm -hmm. And that ripple effect for everything that Charlotte and Mecklenburg says we want to be and how we want to change and be a better city and community, the hub has to be right, because mm -hmm. the spokes, right? So mm -hmm. it's a big charge. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm a little nervous about it, I'm, and I'm mm -hmm. very, a little anxious about it, but I think that keeps me honest. You know, that keeps me authentic and honest to the work. If mm -hmm. I just went in and thought, we, I got this figured out, we'll just change a few policies and ask people to, that's not what we're gonna do. It's a journey. And we're just, uh, and you know, we're never gonna arrive. I like that. We're not ever gonna <laughs> arrive. I agree, yes. Um, we're gonna make a lot of stops along the way on the track. Mm -hmm. um, and it's gonna be hard, you know, it, it's, it's gonna be hard and there's gonna be some good and we're gonna, we're gonna feel like we're, you know, and there are gonna be days where we feel like we're crashing but we're gonna keep on the track. And we're never gonna arrive. There's no destination on this. And I think that for people who think we're getting started in this and think, well, we'll do this and see, mm -hmm. I think um, they're gonna be, that we're gonna bring them along in the journey because we need them as well. That's what I would say. So 
Anything else while we're together? No, um, I really appreciate the conversation. We hope you'll join us in this work, whether you're at the council table, in a learning community, or just in your affinity groups on campus. We're gonna be calling on you because we are gonna build a campus of awareness, behavioral change, and really a cultural shift that everybody at the college feels like they belong and that they can be successful. Have a great evening.